Hey guys, if you're not able to watch my long form content or podcast, here are some short form clips for you to enjoy. Now, we have a lot of people who follow us who will be pooping every day and will be eating every day and mostly they come to me because they eat wrong. Mm -hmm. And there's one problem I can't solve in eating is when people live in PGs, paying guests huh. and hostels. Uh -huh. And that's most of struggling India today. People who watch us, mm -hmm. who are building their careers and mm -hmm. all and they want to work late nights and all. And they're saying that, how do I control gastric if I stay in our PGs and hotels because they add baking soda to food. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are some modifiable factors and there are some non-modifiable. Like what, what secret agent can we take to protect us? That's what I'm saying. So, there is modifiable factors and then non-modifiable factors. Non-modifiable factors, it looks like in this person where they are giving baking soda in the mess and he doesn't have any other option to modify that. Uh, best case scenario is stop it. But uh, as a medical doctor, do you think baking soda does a kujili or irritate your gut? You know, it, it completely depends upon the individual. It's bio individual. Ah, it ha it also, it also it's like I, I can't stand coffee. It irritates my gut. Correct. But for somebody else, coffee is amazing. I'll tell you an example. For research wise, they said that coffee, chocolate, citrus fruits have aggravated the acid exposure because it increases the acidity. So before five years, ten years before, we used to tell all patients when coming into the office, stop chocolate, stop coffee, stop it. But the patient is telling me that when I eat chocolate, it is nothing is happening to me. I'm okay. But when I drink tea, yes, that is happening. It's, there's a bio-individuality. The same way when I told recently somebody have guava to, to increase your vitamin C, this mm -hmm. is I go to throat infection and I get cold. Mm. And then I actually saw this in a few of my clients that there's a bi-individuality. Mm. So no one size fits all in food. Correct, yeah. Does the same hold true for medicines? Yeah. <laughs> so that's why when we talked about the psyllium husk, yeah. some patients may be able to tolerate it. Some I had a patient who got psyllium husk constipation. It could. He's like, I just can't touch it. I couldn't poop for two <laughs> days. So I don't know what happened to that psyllium husk in his gut. But, you know, <laughs> the baking soda option um, is there anything we can do to counter it? Um, so what I tell my patients is whenever there's a non-modifiable risk factor where you really absolutely love this baking soda, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But see whether you're able to check all the other risk factors that you can modify, like sleeping properly, eating all right at the other times and all those things. Okay. Simple Dr. Paul saying, go to the nutritionist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so risk for fatty liver and how it can be reversed. Now, does the liver come in the gastro department? Yes. That's what's called gastroenterology and hepatology. Hepatology is liver. Ah, so I learned something today. Uh, so doctors also are hepatologists. Oh, uh, hepatology. So there is one more year of fellowship where people do just liver alone. And in the entire human body, let's say you are not a gastro or a hepato, according to you, which is the most important system? Gut. The gut. Even if I'm not a gastro, I'm going to say gut. Yeah, you know, there's a joke <laughs> that, that somebody said that, you know, the, all the organs had a had a meeting and a discotheque and everyone was posturing that I'm the best in Dr. Paul's body. Brain says I'm number one. The nose said I'm number one. The heart said I'm number one. Everybody said number one. And then when the, when the um, anus, sphincter muscle said I'm number one, everyone laughed at the, at the sphincter. So the inner says, okay, you guys are laughing. Let's, let's he, laugh decided, he decided to shut up everyone by stop working for three days. <laughs> All other systems shut down. Or open up at inappropriate circumstances. <laughs> oh, that's even worse. <laughs> that's even worse. In my gastroenterology, they say that the most important function that any other organ cannot do is your anal sphincter muscle. That wow. anal sphincter muscle to work properly, there are so many things that and, has to go right. And And... Correct me if I'm wrong. If people have a lot of stress, your anal sphincter muscle goes for a toss. Absolutely. That's why you see this, you know, fecal incontinence where they're not able to hold the stool and they have leakage. Yeah. That happens mainly, mostly in neurological patients. That's why they say there's a gut-brain axis. Right. Okay, we'll talk about that a little bit further. Uh, but we were talking about risk for fatty liver and how it can be reversed. What's your take to people? So, so fatty liver, we see that every day on a daily basis. Two main risk factors. One is alcohol and the other one is obesity. But the problem is we drink alcohol and we eat biryani as a side dish. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so there are three Bs that goes for fatty liver. One is biryani, beer and belly fat. People don't give up biryani and beer. Then they deny that they have belly <laughs> fat. <laughs> So, so we got our cast, uh, task cut out. But look, the doctor, the gastro is saying, get your belly fat down. Get your beer down. That's alcohol. Correct. And, and basically, biryani, for those who are uninitiated and not from India, it means food. 
eating too much of food biryani yeah yeah mm-hmm. biryani itself is an emotion that's a different story <laughs> <laughs> do you know the highest sold food on the e-commerce platforms in india is biryani yeah, yeah. which is why there's this full startup generation of different biryanis right. uh, happening because we just love biryani and so i think keep eating biryani because you'll keep dr paul and me in business <laughs> okay what is the alternative to white rice for south indians from telangana ha huh. so i have a wonderful hack for it i love white rice mm. okay i always include white rice yes brown rice is good slightly better but i don't like the taste of the brown rice for me so i always do white rice but i just make sure that i have at least three servings of vegetables along with the white rice no matter what uh, i try to if i have only one vegetables then i increase that serving okay so make sure that you have fiber from additional sources when you have white rice it's like when you go out partying make sure there's one person who's not Drunk. drinking i think that's equivalent of vegetable being there with rice so you're celebrating with rice and the vegetables are behaving like the uh, the driver that's going to take you home and responsibly like hey okay, everyone low blood sugar level you know i'm going to take care of your fiber the police is a gastroenterologist when i have oh fiber is there okay good we can leave yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not cutting a fine ticket at that point right. <laughs> okay i'm a 21 year old girl why do i have gastric issues when i eat fast food or oily foods um is so is this is this so uh, a misnomer that young people have indestructible guts <laughs> yes no this this might be true in one way because their abuse has not been translated into clinical symptoms yet so but if you talk to a 40 year old like me everybody will tell you that i wish i would have eaten right between 15 to 30 i think the long term damage i mean the, all this damage is long term it doesn't happen right away and the actual effect happens 10 to 15 years after and that is the problem In fact the question has the answer itself because why do i have gastric issues when i eat fast food or oily foods as a nutritionist i would tell you this the answer is in your question fast food and oily foods cause gastritis you are you are you've been activated and just because you're 21 years of age doesn't mean you're immune to it it just means that dr paul gets you much younger as a patient you know so take care of what you put into your body so i say that you know people say oh i have hemorrhoids whenever i sit down uh i have pain i said don't sit down sit up <laughs> <laughs> the the patient must be thinking which doctor have i talked <laughs> to right now but uh with the sense of humor okay we are moving from the solid department to the gaseous department so vapor department after every meal there is gas formation in my stomach mm. gas formation in my stomach so let's gas this gas form in the stomach does it form in the small intestine does it form in the large intestine and why is that gas production what could be the reason yeah so there are two main reasons i think main problem with many people over here is i think irritable bowel syndrome ibs where your stomach and colon are extremely sensitive and the reason that it became sensitive is because it has not been fed the right amount of food that the intestine wants and what happens is due course of time it's always a balance between your good gut bacteria and your bad gut bacteria you want good gut to be up bad gut to be low so that the balance is perfect but because of the processed foods ultra processed foods or whatever we are doing this balance is reverse and this bad gut bacteria loves sugar loves carbs so you f- eat carbs they make you crave for carbs you eat carbs and then the bacteria digests and then releases co2 releases gas and then that can manifest as bloating that can manifest as flatulence and that's why we call there is a condition called sibo we call it a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth so they're not supposed to be there at that small intestine in that much amount of amounts so working with doctors is a privilege that i always have and dr paul for me is on free time with me right now on my podcast health shots hey guys if you've enjoyed this clip then click here and watch the full episode and don't forget to subscribe because your body is the most expensive real estate and i'm your real estate agent